Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're on page 35, Stoichiometry. This is pretty much the central focus of the unit. I mean, it, it's named after it. And what I'm hoping that you'll see is that it's actually not that bad. I'm hoping. So take a look. Stoichiometry is the relationship between the relative quantities of substances taking part in a reaction or forming a compound, uh, aka stoichiometry is the relationship between the reactants and the products. Put another way, it is the numeric form of the conservation of mass. It shows how reactants become products through mole ratios. The mole, as we've already learned, is the central unit of understanding the relationship between reactants and products. And that is, it is the balanced reaction coefficient that represents the moles or molecules. What I'm saying here is, is, as I've discussed with you guys before, a mole was a way to scale up chemistry. Instead of talking about individual molecules, we were able to talk about buckets of molecules, giant containers of molecules, mountains of molecules. And because of some clever thinking on the part of the people involved, we were able to make this whole thing work in a way that was very simple, very straightforward. So, an example here. We've got a chemical equation. We've got uh, N2, uh, 3H2, 2NH3. All right, so I'll, let me just put it on the board here. So we've got N2 plus 3H2 goes to make 2NH3. So this is my balanced chemical equation. So the coefficients here are, of course, 1, 3, and 2. So these are the way in which these are related. So for example, if I need one mole of this, I would need three moles of this, and I would make two moles as a result. And that's sort of the relationship. These things are connected in some way. But here's the funny part about this. As we can see, these coefficients relate the amount of one molecule to another. This means they basically work as a conversion factor for our conversion matrix have, want, lose, gain. It works. So, for example, let's say I have six moles of, well, what's the one I came up with here? I used uh, N2. Six moles of N2. And my question is, how much H2 do I need to have this reaction? So I'm looking to find out the moles of H2 in order for this reaction to work. Okay, well, as we've discussed many times, have, want, lose, gain. So let's set it up. I have N2. So I want to get rid of N2. So moles of N2 is going to go on my on the bottom here. Moles of H2 goes on the top. Well, now is the part where we need to figure out what numbers to put here. We don't get our number from the periodic table. We're not going to use Avogadro's number. We have to find some other numbers. And those numbers are the coefficients in the balanced equation. The moles of N2, how many do I have? I have one. And for every one mole of N2, I need three moles of H2. That's it. We've set it up. Now we solve it. Six times three will be 18. Congratulations. You have done stoichiometry. You have been a chemist. This is what chemists must do. They are given some quantity of material, in this case, six moles of N2, and we are told you need to make this reaction happen. How can we do it? How much do we need to order? What do we need to send down to the stockroom, boss? Tell us. And then you go, uh-huh, yes, yes, uh-huh, yeah, and you calculate a number, and you tell them we need 18 moles. And they run off, and they get it, and that's why they pay you the big bucks. But that's it. That's all we really need to do. And it just tells you here, like, it's just... You can almost think of stoichiometry as a way to convert one chemical to another, because that's what it is. We're converting these two chemicals into this one. How much of each chemical do we need depends on the ratio of the balanced equation. And all of that ties into the mole. And we're, we're kind of done. <laughs> that's basically it. That's how stoichiometry works. 
on page 36, we've got a bunch of examples. I'm going to go through them all because I want to really make sure you guys get this. But realistically, this is all we have to do. We use our conversion matrix and we use our balanced equation in order to solve these questions. Okay. We're going to continue using this formula. I'm just going to work with some other ones. Okay. We've already done the, uh, the six moles of N2. Now we're going to do six moles of H2. All right, so this is going to be example one. We've got six moles of H2. So I'm going to do it over here. And now let's do it in another color. Let's do it in uh, red. So we're going to have six moles of H2. And the question here on page 36 says, how many moles of N2 will you need to do this reaction? Right. So we want to completely consume all six moles of the H2. We don't want any leftovers. We can't keep them for later. Can't put them in the fridge. Sorry. So we're going to want moles of n2 brackets equals well we are comparing h2 we have to get rid of the h2s and we got to get more of the n2s and we're looking at moles in this case moles of well we look at our balanced equation here and we see there's a three there so we got a three down here and we put a one up there so this becomes six times one divide by three two we need two moles of N2. So you tell your various staff, hey, guys, go down to the uh, storeroom, grab me two, a cylinder with two moles of N2 gas in it. We'll hook it up. We'll be done. Home in time for lunch. All right, all right. Well, those two are pretty easy. Let's do a little bit more difficult. What happens if it was half a mole of H2? Ooh. Then how much N2 do we need? Half a mole? Why, that would require me to, like, change this number from 6 to 0 0.5. And there's no other change to this equation. It still becomes 0 0.5 times 1 divided by 3. What do we get for that? We're going to get 1.5, I think. That's what I worked out. But you know what? I'm just going to double check it. So 0 0.5 divided by 3 equals. I didn't get 0.5. Hmm. Did I do the question wrong? How many moles of N2? No? no? Looks like I just wrote it wrong in the answer key. I'll have to change it. Anyway, it should be 0 0.16 moles of N2. Done. The method remains the same. I didn't have to touch this in the middle because the ratios 1 and 3 haven't changed. So again, once you set up the matrix, it just sort of does it for you. You don't really have to do worry about it too much. You just got to set it up properly and, you know, not mess up your math like I apparently did in the answer key. So next one, if you're given four moles of N2, how much H2 will you need? All right, so four moles of N2, that means we're back over here on this one. Instead of getting six, we're now looking at Four. So four moles of N2. How many moles of H2 do we get? Well, we're going to get 12. We're done. The ratios stay the same. We're just changing the amounts going back and forth. Finally, six moles of H2. How much NH3 will be produced? Ah, okay, this is a different question now. Sort of. I mean, we're still going to use this to do it. But we're no longer comparing N2 and H2. Now we're comparing H2 to NH3. Hmm. Okay. Well, this needs another color. This is a new problem. So we're going to compare N2, moles of N2, oh, not N2, moles of H2. That's the problem when they're both twos. It's easy to get them confused. Moles of H2, and we're going to make moles of NH3. Brackets, divide. Now, they give us six moles of H2. Now we've got to relate. We're going to get rid of H, so the H's are going to go on the bottoms, and the NH3's are going on the top. Well, H2 is a 3. N2 is a 2. And that's it. That's all we have to set up. We just now need to solve it. And it automatically frames it for us. 6 times 2 is going to be 12. 12 divided by 3 will be 4. So if I put 6 moles of H2 gas in the reaction chamber with 
enough N2 to make this whole thing work. Obviously, if I don't have any N2, I'm going to have a hard time. We'll talk more about that later. If I put it in there and I've got lots of the N2, more than I'll ever need, this six moles will produce four moles of this. This allows us to figure out how to make things. We can produce exactly the amount we need. And that's kind of it. That is the core of stoichiometry. You'll notice we need a few things. One, we need a balanced chemical equation, which means that you know all that practice balancing chemical equations is going to be pretty important. If you don't have a balanced chemical equation, if you get these coefficients wrong, everything else goes wrong. So remember, the analogy I gave was that this was like the sentences of chemistry. Well, this, the stoichiometry here, this is our paragraphs. We're doing stuff now. We're producing things. We're predicting what we're going to make. We're going to predict what we need to get down from the storeroom or the store or whatever in order to be able to make things. This is more work, but it's not a lot more work. Once we get our balanced equation, we then just have to set up our conversion matrix following the same pattern we always do, have, want, gain, lose. Once we set that up properly, we plug in the numbers, answer comes out the other side. Easy. Very straightforward. I hope, anyway. So, if you guys take a look here, on page 37, you guys have more practice for this. Same with page 38, and you've got answers. Page 39 shows a little diagram of things, and then page 40... There's a reason we did all that conversions, guys, right? Think about it. You converted from grams to moles. Hmm. Wonder why. But we'll leave that for next time. If you're feeling comfortable with this, you can certainly give it a shot. You can take a look at the notes on page 40. But right now, I want you guys just to focus on doing stoichiometry in and of itself as it is. Hopefully, you're going to find that it's not too bad. Um, that's it. I'll leave it there. Surprisingly quick, right? Given that this is the main thing of the whole unit, but it builds on stuff we already know. And that is the key to a lot of these things. We build on stuff we already know in order to make it easier to do things. Okay, guys, I will see you next time.